Alright, Bio2, welcome back. We are continuing with Section 1 in Chapter 22 about plants. We kind of got some general characteristics of plants at the beginning, and now we're going to talk about where plants came from, how they came to be, how they are today, by taking a look at early plants. So, early plants. So, when plants first appeared, life on Earth changed. As plants colonized the land, they changed the environment so other organisms could develop, and new ecosystems arose and organic matter began to form soil. So, as I mentioned earlier, plants, they kind of take in the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, and they breathe out oxygen that we breathe in. So that's just one example of how plants allow almost all of life, because almost all of life today requires oxygen, how, they li how it allowed all of life to develop, because it gave us our oxygen. So they are key, and we owe a lot to plants. So how did these plants evolve? How did they come to be? So... The first plants evolved from an organism similar to the multicellular green algae living today. So as you can see this picture right here, I'm sure you guys have all seen uh, green algae, maybe better known as pond scum, growing on top of the ponds that we have here in the summertime. So it's just really kind of gross and nasty, and it's um, it's solely it's confined solely to water. So our first plants evolved from an organism that was similar to the multicellular green algae that we have today. So the multicellular green algae have the size, color, and appearance of plants. They have reproductive cycles similar to those of plants. And they also have cell walls and photosynthetic pigments that are identical to those of plants. So that's, again, more key characteristics to show us that they had a common ancestor and that they came from the same, uh, same origins. And then our DNA sequences that we have today confirm that plants are closely related to certain groups of green algae, suggesting that the ancestors of the first plants were indeed algae. So this is going back to our uh, all of our tools that we look at in classification. We're not just going to look at appearance anymore. We are also looking at the DNA that is involved and <clears throat> to see how they are related. So we look at appearance. The appearance, again, we have size, color, and appearance. Reproductive cycles, I believe reproductive uh, cycles were mentioned, or the breeding behaviors were mentioned in uh, think how we identify things, and photos, uh, cell walls and photosynthetic pigments. So those are all characteristics that we have looked at before when determining the evolutionary history of an organism. Same goes for plants as it does for animals. So the oldest known plant fossils are about 450 million years old, and they're similar to today's mosses, and they had a simple structure and grew close to the ground. So this is just kind of a crude drawing about what we think early plants look like because, again, we don't have any artists around from that time that could actually draw us a picture because, well, it's 450 million years ago. And so this is what the first plant might have looked like. And then our fossil records suggest that the first plants needed water to complete their life cycles and the demands on life on land favored the evolution of plants. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. So again, Fossils suggest that first plant that the first plants needed water to complete their life cycles, and uh, we have a list here of three things, and these are the demands of life on land favored the evolution of plants that were more resistant to the drying rays of the sun, more capable of conserving water, and more capable of reproducing without water. So these are early plants were the ones that could take on these challenges right here. They could resist drying out. They were capable of conserving water, and they were capable of reproducing without water. And from these plants, several major groups of plants evolved. One group developed into the mosses and their relatives. Another group gave rise to all other plants. And all plants have evolved different adaptations for a variety of terrestrial environments. Terrestrial is just a fancy word for land. And <clears throat> we're going to talk about all these different groups. So we're going to talk about the mosses and their relatives in our next video. And we're going to talk about all the other groups after that. So here is an overview of what the plant kingdom looks like. Plants are divided into four groups based on these features, the type of water conducting tissues they have, whether or not they have seeds or the types of seeds, and whether or not they have flowers or the types of flowers. Plants are also classified by other features, including reproductive structure and body plan. But these three right here are going to be our most prevalent. And here is an evolutionary history among plants. So we have our green algae ancestor. And then this is, again, this is a cladogram, as you can see here, the red dots being the derived traits. So the first one we have are mosses and their relatives. And then there was no, and then the next, our next bullet point here is water conducting our vascular tissue. So everything to the right here is going to have water conducting vascular tissue, where the mosses will not. 
Then we have ferns and their relatives. And so then the next one is seeds. So ferns don't have seeds, mosses don't have seeds. So then we have cone-bearing plants. Um, and then moving along the next one, our next uh, derived trait is flowers and the seeds enclosed in fruit. Cone-bearing do not have that. And then our flowering plants are gonna be the ones that have that. So that is a quick overview. Again, we're gonna get into each one of these four groups more specifically. Today, scientists classify plants more sp precisely by comparing the DNA sequences of various species. Again, this is all something we should know now. It's just kind of secondhand that we're looking at the DNA today. So that is it. If you have any questions, let me know.